Friends, good morning and welcome to another live stream. This being the SPTV News Live part of the channel, where we keep you up to date on all the latest shenanigans in the satanic cult of Scientology. So today's story is kind of near and dear to my heart because, well, let's put let's start this off by posing a question. What could possibly be more moon batshit insane than an actual Scientologist, you might ask? The answer to that is a freaking independent Scientologist, or they're affectionately called indies and often free zoners. So this is actually kind of a complex area, but it appertains to today's news story where said independents are going to be descending upon Big Blue in a protest. And to give you a brief understanding of what the hell an indie Scientologist is, these are people that basically believe that David Miscavige, the current leader of the cult, is the cause of all the problems. Before he came in and took over, L. Ron Hubbard and his tech were basically perfect. So they never undo the full spell of coming out of Scientology. They often spend a lifetime at this level. And they just think that um, Hubbard was kind of a, a good guy and they still practice the tech outside of the church. And they stay in this feedback loop of ever trying to get back at Miscavige as if that's the root of the problem. So here's today's news story appertaining to that. Indie Scientologists go on the attack. Victoria Palmer, and she's um, an Indie Scientologist, she's planning a September 23rd protest at the infamous Big Blue Scientology building. And for those that don't know what that is, so we have this eyesore right in the middle of Los Angeles. And I'll just read you about this, what it is to put it in context as to where these freaks are going to go and do said protest. Los Angeles, California has the largest concentration of Scientologists and Scientology-related organizations in the world, with the Church of Scientology's most visible presence being in the Hollywood district of the city. The organization owns a former hospital on Fountain Avenue, which houses Scientology's West Coast headquarters, also known as PAC, Big Blue, and Pacific Area Command Base. And it's named Big Blue because, obviously, it's painted blue. Adjacent buildings include headquarters of several internal Scientology divisions, including American St. Hill Organization, the Advanced Organization of Los Angeles, that also is known as, a, as the acronym AOLA, and that's where I did my OT or confidential levels and had a nervous breakdown outside of this fucking organization, and the Church of Scientology of Los Angeles. All these organizations are integrated within the corporation Church of Scientology Western United States. And the Church of Scientology successfully campaigned to have the city of Los Angeles rename one block of a street running through their complex L. Ron Hubbard Way. The street has been paved in brick, not to be confused with the yellow brick road. It's just crazy that they actually name a street L. Ron Hubbard. It makes one wonder if there isn't a Sung Young Moon Drive somewhere in this world. Anyway, so before we get into the story and the significance of, like I said, these freaks descending upon Big Blue and trying to, you know, fix Miscavige, um, I want to show you a video that I did, I don't know, two, two years ago, and it was based on the late, great Arnie Lerma's work. He was an ex-Scientologist, and he would often dive deeper down the rabbit hole than many of the ex-Scientologists, and he came up with this thing called the 10 Steps Out of Scientology. And I'm just going to play you step three, because like I talked about earlier, people often pitch their tent at thinking it's just Miss Cabbage, and that's only step three. So to put these people in context, let me just show you a quick clip from that, and then we'll continue on with the rest of the dot connecting. Where we have the indie Scientologists, and we're so... Let me so take this back a little bit at the top was corrupt, right? Step three. Now, this is where we had the indie Scientologists and where so many ex-Scientologists hang out at for a long time. People can spend a lifetime on this particular one. And that is Miscavige and crew are evil demons from another dimension or something similar. So this, this is what sparked this particular, this week's cult clip is because I'm going to show you a discussion between uh, a Scientologist or ex-Scientologist who actually got to step 10, it appears, and, you know, doesn't believe in any of it, and an indie Scientologist. And they had a little fight, uh, not fight, but a, a very interesting discussion uh, on this thread on the Danny Masterson video to be continued on that.
So this miscavige and crew are evil demons from another dimension. This is what happens when, this is the power of the brainwashing and the power of believing in the technology. I gotta tell you, when I had auditing without any other frame of reference that I was being hypnotized and I could access that state of mind elsewhere through other techniques if I wanted to, I really was sold on the idea that no matter what else happens, the Scientology technology is special. I've never felt this way before, it definitely works. Therefore, Finally, you might get lucky and go, Miss Cabbage is the SP or suppressive person or sociopath. He's the one that's fucking up Scientology. But I still believe in Hubbard. I'm still going to practice this technology outside of the church. These, in, they're called indie Scientologists and they're a very special breed. I'm not trying to be mean or, you know, um, or I'm not trying to discount their experiences. It's just they're... I've had many interactions with these people and it's so mind boggling to me personally being out of this for over a decade. How can't, I mean, I know why, but how can't they see the obvious? Can't they just go that next step and realize that actually Hubbard and the tech and it's all a fraud? Um, so anyways, that's where the Indies hang out at. And then if you're lucky and you get to the next step, Hubbard went crazy at the end. Okay, okay, so you guys get the gist of that, right? Now, I'm going to leave in the a link in the description box, as I always do with all the references, and you guys can check out the full video. But the gist is these people are kind of stuck around uh, level three, shall we say, in coming out of this thing, which, um, so that's why they kind of do the silly things they're about to do. A little more information on these independent Scientologists. The free zone or more recently identified as independent Scientology, comprises a variety of non-affiliated independent groups, organizations, and individuals who practice Scientology beliefs and techniques independently of the Church of Scientology. Stand by one second, please. Okay. So they basically practice independent of um, the Church of Scientology because, again, they think mis it's all miscavige. You know what I mean? Such practitioners range from those who closely adhere to the original teachings of Scientology's founder, L. Ron Hubbard, to those who have adopted the practices far from Church of Scientology beliefs and practices. And the term free zone was originally only used by a single organization, but the terms now commonly applied to all non-Church non of Scientology Scientologists, although many dispute the application of the term to themselves. The International Free Zone Association, the group whose name became adopted as a generic term for independent Scientology, was not the first independent Scientologist group. The California Association of Dianetic Auditors, the oldest breakaway group that's still in existence today, claims a founding date of December 1950, predating the Church of Scientology itself. Interesting. So there's always been splinter groups uh, well before the Process Church. Skeptic Magazine described the Free Zone as, quote, a group founded by ex-Scientologists to promote L. Ron Hubbard's ideas independent of the Church of Scientology, and a Miami, a Miami Herald article wrote that ex-Scientologists joined the Free Zone because they felt that Church of Scientology leadership had, quote, strayed from Hubbard's original teachings. Now, let's get a look behind some of these people who are actually spearheading this ridiculousness, and there's three main people. And um, they, this gal actually has some kind of influence. Often Scientology will safe point it, safe point itself um, within political parties, or they themselves will actually try to get involved in politics. And so here we have kind of a double whammy of an independent Scientologist um, who's been running for office recently. And this is just one of the freaks, man. Wait till we get to Ray Robles. Anyways, so this is um, this is the gal that's spearheading this and her. We've, we're always interested when Scientologists run for public office, which isn't very often. Actually, I should tell you this gal's name first. Where the hell is it? This is from Tony Ortega, by the way. Link in the description box if you'd like to subscribe to his Substack. And this uh, predates today's article, and we get a little background on where this is coming from. Okay, Victoria Palmer is the one who's spearheading this out at Big Blue. Will you be there, Nasty Nathaniel? I sure as hell will be, if I can get there. We're always interested when Scientologists run for public office, which isn't very often. In 2020, we wrote about a former Sea Org member running for city council in the Oregon town of McMinnville. She lost. There was a married couple who ran, who each ran for office in Nevada. One of them, Brent Jones, I remember that freaking dude. We were on the OT levels together, did serve as a state legislator, but failed in his bid to move up to lieutenant governor. Excellent. 
And also in Nevada, we've had some questions about a perennial candidate there. Now we've learned about something a little different. Victoria Palmer, an independent Scientologist, someone who practices the ideas of founder L. Ron Hubbard, but outside the confines of the official Church of Scientology itself, is running in Seattle's November City Council election. And it's the way we learned about Palmer's candidacy that is maybe the most interesting thing about it. Keep these people in mind because I'm going to uh, show you um, Ray Robles and, some, and who these people are. Noted indie figurehead and maniac Ray Robles has announced the return of his Theta Alliance, which has an annual convention in Reno, but hasn't met, met since the pandemic hit. Excuse me. In his flyer, Mr. Robles, I think it's Robles actually, Robles noted that the Scientology free zone has been fractured in recent years, and it was time to, quote, bring together all the independent field practicing the works of Scientology and Dianetics, including all developments. The convention, with a mere $250 entry, will be take, we did take place over three days, and this happened on August 13th or August 11th, the 13th in Reno, and these three speakers that I was talking about are featured on the flyer coming up. So the first is this absolute maniac named Robles. Is. Again, link in the description box if you want to see more videos from him. But I'm going to show you a quick clip. Who is a very colorful figure. That's one way of putting it. He said he had, quote, sorcerer powers on CNN's 2017 Believer episode, which featured the independents. And we also noted that at one time he was offering followers the secret of living to age 150 for only $100. The second speaker featured is absolute maniac Trey Lotz, a longtime stalwart in the independent field whose endorsement helped LRH 2.0. That would be Justin Craig, currently sitting in prison after claiming he was the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard, gained some traction with indies. And the third speaker listed is the aforementioned Palmer. Now check this out. Here are the people. This is the flyer that they sent out. And if you can see here, Ray Robles, he uh, lists his credentials and it says L's, that's the L rundowns, and OT, he's an OT auditor, and CS, that stands for case supervisor, and an OT9. Now, Scientologists in the bubble world don't know that the bridge only goes up to OT8. Hubbard didn't actually finish the other levels, but he's claiming that he is an OT9, meaning he's so narcissistic that he stole Hubbard's con and created OT9 himself. And this guy, Trey Lotz, is interesting. <laughs> I know these guys, they're just... They never quite get over the tech. He's an L's rundown completion, an OT auditor, and an OT8. These are all <laughs> squirrels, too. Like Scientology hates these people because you're not supposed to practice it outside. They're not doing it correctly. And here's the aforementioned Victoria Palmer. And let's continue on. So here's how Robles described Palmer. Lifelong Scientologist, Class 4, OT3, leading the way to freedom. This presentation will rekindle your purpose for freedom. Victoria will share the story of how her persistence ended the oppressive mandates in her state, bringing freedom to the environment. She is now a candidate for Seattle City Council. That sent us looking up Palmer's campaign website. We didn't see any mention of Scientology on it. Her about page was mostly about her anti-mandate advocacy. The COVID pandemic response by government authorities in Washington state was excessive and created huge injustices and casualties. Lockdowns, face coverings, and mandatory vaccination caused incalculable damage to the physical, mental, and financial well-being of Washingtonians. I became an outspoken advocate for those damaged by this government outreach. I started with a campaign of signs on the streets and freeways around Seattle and built up to over 20 organized marches in the Seattle area, including a march of almost 1,000 people through downtown Seattle in January 2020. Our effectives were our efforts were effective in ending vaccine mandates in many private businesses. I helped others facing unfair mandates successfully keep their job or stay in college. Our outcry helped bring the early ending of the statewide public and employee mask mandates in 2022. Oh, shit, man. Sorry, guys. I completely forgot. We just got a, um, a new sponsor recently, and I have to play this 10-second uh, ad, but we will be right back. Stand by. This portion of CBS This Morning, sponsored by Pfizer. Oh. CBS Health Watch, sponsored by Pfizer. Brought to you by Pfizer. Brought to you by Pfizer. Brought to you by Pfizer. Today's countdown to the royal wedding is brought to you by Pfizer. Sponsored by Pfizer. On how to find the hidden sugars in the American family diet.
sponsored by Pfizer. Okay, awesome. We're definitely moving up in the world. This channel may not be monetized, but shout out to uh, Pfizer for sponsoring. So continuing on where we left off. We were curious, though, whether Palmer attributed any of her success fighting state mandates to her background in Scientology. We asked her about that in an email, and we'll let you know what she says when she gets back to us. Yeah, Tony, I'm sure she's going to get right back to you. Palmer, who says she's new to politics and isn't affiliated with any political party, is one of five announced challengers to District 6 incumbent Democrat Dan Strauss, who's seeking a second term. So far, he's garnered about a dozen endorsements from state legislators and other local officials, so we're not sure if Palmer has a strong chance to unseat Strauss, but those OT abilities have to give her an edge. No? Okay, so there's some background on her. Now we move to the next absolute maniac that will be there at Big Blue in the name of the infamous Ray Robles. All right, let me pull him up a little bit here more. Sorry, I got to boot you guys out of the chat for a second, but if you have any questions, please throw them in the chat now and we'll answer them as we uh, wind down. So Ray Robles is a well-known independent auditor, international lecturer, and seminarist. Um, translation, he stole Hubbard's tech, he's a scam artist, and now he's using it to scam other people. He has been a successful personal counselor and business consultant for over 40 years. Ray had 20 years experience as an auditor and CS, again, that's case supervisor, in the Church of Scientology, and has continued to be an auditor CS and supervisor for over 20 fucking years. Come on, Ray. Jesus. Independently outside of the church, he's the founder and executive director of the Reno Free Zone Center, Free Zone Worldwide, and the yearly Theta Alliance Convention, which has been meeting annually since 2001. And let's listen to the maniac himself. Okay, hello. My name's uh, Ray Robles. Uh, there are many Robleses in the uh, internet. My, I am the Ray Robles, and I'm a Free Zone auditor. I've been operating in Free Zone for uh, 20 years or more, and uh, I was in the Church of Scientology 20 years ago as an auditor, um, CS, staff member, uh, mission holder, twice mission holder. I uh, worked in the uh, Wise Business Consulting, and um, I did about just about any, everything you can do in the church. Uh, I did the, uh, the original OT levels up to OT7, and um, many, many processes and internships. These are just some of my certificates here, and they all will be posted on my website for you to see. So you guys get the gist. I mean, it's half sad, but then it's half like, you know what? Maybe they're just conning people and they know better, but they often don't get let, they don't get rid of um, the status that they had in the church. I'll admit that was hard to let go of the fact that I got up to OT3 and it meant, it not only didn't mean absolutely anything in the real world, but it was, um, it was very challenging to just undo the whole thing in general. And often Scientologists get ex Scientologists get stuck somewhere because it's a hard process where for whatever reasons, emotional and mental, they can't cross the bridge to accept that the entire thing was a con that can kind of sting. If you guys want a quick sample about what this is probably going to look like on September 23rd, and let me know in the comments afterwards, if you're going, because if I'm free, this is in what, like a week and a half. What is it? Okay, it's the sixth today. So if I'm free, I'm definitely going to go down there and film that. And uh, maybe I'll see some old, some old friends or whatever. Let me know in the comments if you're coming too. This is out in Los Angeles. But here's a sample using an Angry Gay Pope video about what it's probably going to look like. So just replace Angry Gay Pope and what he's doing in this video you're about to see with um, sci independent Scientologists, those that you just saw and the crew that's going to be assembled. And check this out. So I'm forced to... By the way, um, he was paid by Karen De La Carriere here to go promote independent Scientologists because that's what she is. And you can hear him say at the beginning that he's disgusted to have to do this. But this is a way, um, I guess, according to Karen, to snap the people out of the true believers in Scientology to come over to it was just Miss Cabbage that was bad. I hold this sign that promotes iScientology.org, a Scientology website. And it just makes me want to throw... <laughs> Yep. 
Hi. Have you folks heard of iScientology.org? That's where independent Scientologists can experience Scientology without miscavige. Would you, would you like to experience Scientology without regging? iScientology is where your children can experience Scientology without so much high costs. You guys should check out iScientology.org. It's the online resource for independent Scientology. Scientology without Miss Cavage. <laughs> Hi. Have you heard of iScientology.org? iScientology.org is where your independent Scientology website is. iScientology.org offers Scientology without Miss Cavage. Do you want your children to pay the same high prices for auditing that you have to? Take your children to iscientology.org. Stick it to them, AGP. I hope Karen pays well. Okay, so that's kind of what's going to be going down. And, um, oh, by the way, with the, with the volume, I can't do anything, my friend, with that Ray Robles video. That's as loud as it goes on YouTube, and I can't fix it on this end. So all the links to everything we talk about in this video, and sometimes more, are always in the description box. So put on some headphones. I'll link uh, that Ray Robles video and you can watch. I'll put a, I'll put a few of them in there and just you got to put headphones on because you can't hear that freaking guy. Care, how are you doing? Um, do you think COS would take an independent back if they got elected to an office? It's about power and influence. The problem with that is the independent want to, wouldn't want to go back to the church care because the very reason they're leaving is because David's in charge right now and they protest that. They want Hubbard or maybe Hubbard 2.0 or anybody other than Miscavige because they haven't understood the fact that it was all a con to begin with. So no, I don't think that would even be a possible scenario because the, they, re, they would resist uh, any temptation to go back to the original church, hence why they left. Lady Veritas, what's up, my friend? I will get back to you shortly, by the way. I get behind my friends sometimes on emails and all the information you send, but I'm working on it. Um, question. When did that indie movement start? That's a great question, lady. I think it said in in December of 1950, that's when the first like indie splinter group started. I'm not sure if that's quite the same thing, but um, I'll look into that actually and see if I can't um, put some information there. Okay, guys. Um, it doesn't seem like there's any more questions. Let me just check real quick. But as always, you know, I really appreciate you joining us. And what do we have coming up? So there'll be more videos, I'm sure, well before Saturday. But on Saturday, I'm going to interview Kelly Copter. And she has an unbelievably heartbreaking story. But she's a really amazingly strong person. I hope I don't cry during that one because um, it's a really powerful story she has to share. And she'll be on live noon, uh, Saturday, Pacific Standard Time. And then a few hours after that at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I'm going to attempt my first Q&A just because I want to hang out with you guys. And if you have any questions that's been burning in your mind, I'd like to um, hang out and answer them. And we're also going to kind of do a drinking game slash, you know, pick your poison game uh, every time a certain word is said. Anyways, my friends, as always, stay safe, stay sane, and most definitely you should fucking stay cult free. Ideological study and use to break the subject's will or is that the case?